Hi guys, today we are going to be talking about the structure in front of us. I know we call it all sorts, but then let me bust your bubble. This is the stomach. <laughs> yes, it is the stomach. What is the best and the first thing to do when you see the stomach? It is always safer to identify the pyloric end and the cardiac end. So, and how do we tell the pyloric from the cardiac end? The pyloric end is always thicker, as you can see, because that is sphincter. And the cardiac end, which has been cut off in this model, around this region, is always thinner. So the cardiac end is always thinner, and the pyloric end is always thicker, right? Now, the next thing to identify are our borders. So we have the greater curvature, we have the lesser curvature. The le greater curvature is also the left border. And the lesser curvature is the right border. So greater curvature, lesser curvature. And we should know our anterior from the posterior and the position in the body. So the stomach is coming from the esophagus. From the esophagus, the stomach is coming this way. Then it curves to the left. Then comes back up. And the pylorus is more to the right. So this is the anatomical position of the stomach. Now let's go to the various structures that are present on the external part of the stomach. So on the greater curvature, which the remnant is still what we can see, this structure here, on the greater curvature, we have the greater omentum. So this is our greater omentum, also called the gastrocolic ligament. So this is our greater omentum. It extends or spans from this region here to the pylorus. So it's and to the first part of the duodenum. So it comes from the two thirds of the greater curvature of the stomach. First part of the duodenum flanks downwards, then flanks back back on upwards to go and insert all the transverse colon. So that is our greater momentum. And they can pin the structure and ask for the function. It acts or serves as the policeman of the abdomen. And what does that mean? It means that when there is an infection or any sort of um, invading pathogens, the greater momentum goes to that region and surrounds it and more like arrests it and holds it in place it and waits till for immune response to act on it before it then unfolds and the immune response acts on the pathogen. So this is our greater momentum. So it acts as a policeman of, of the abdomen. Then we have our lesser curvature. On the lesser curvature, which is this structure that we are still seeing, is our lesser momentum. Yeah, our lesser momentum. And the lesser momentum has two parts. We have the fixed part, which is our hepatogastric ligament, and we have the free part or the free border, which is our hepatoduodenal ligament. So about this area, we have our hepatogastric ligament that joins the stomach to the liver, hepatic for liver and gastric for stomach. And we have the hepatoduodenal ligament that joins the liver to the first part of the duodenum. So it's also attached from the stomach to the first part of the duodenum. So that is our greater momentum, that's our lesser momentum. Now let's talk about the various parts of the stomach. The various parts of the stomach. So we already identified two parts, our cardiac end and our pyloric end. We also have we, also, we, have, we have another part. Histologically it is three, anatomically it is four. So histologically we have cardiac, body and fundus, and pylorus. Body and fundus are put together because they have the same microscopic structure. While anatomically they are separated. So we have the cardiac, we have the fundus above the cardiac, we have the body, and we have the pylorus. The pylorus is divided into three parts. We have the pyloric canal, pyloric antrum, and the pyloric sphincter. So the canal first, then the antrum, then the sphincter. So the sphincter is this thickening that we can see. And we should also know what accounts for the thickening. The sphincter is accounted for by the thickening of the circular muscular layer of the stomach, right? So we'll still go to the interior of the stomach. That's just by the way. So this is our fundus, this is our body, this is our cardiac, and this is our pylorus. We've identified our greater momentum, we've identified our lesser momentum. Now let's go to the interior of the stomach. Yes. I know we might be wondering what each of these are or what these structures that we are seeing, what they are. We'll get right into it shortly. So before we go into the interior, let's talk about the layers of the stomach because it's often asked that this structure acts have a many muscular layer, right? 
So the muscles of the the layers of the GIT basically are our, from the interior to the ex exterior. We have our mucosa, the submucosa, the muscular layer, and the serosa layer. So this outer muscle that we can see is our serosa layer, and this inner muscle we can see is our mucosa layer. Right? So the muscular layer is what led me to that part. The muscular layer for the GIT is usually two the inner circular and the outer longitudinal. However, it is different in the stomach. That's why it can be asked, right? Because it has that's a different muscular layer from the rest of the GIT. So in the stomach, we have three muscular layer. We have the inner oblique, the middle circular, and the outer longitudinal. Inner oblique, middle circular, and outer longitudinal. So that's basically all for the muscular layer. Now let's go to the interior of the stomach proper. Now the stomach, the interior of the stomach, we have gastric pits, we have gastric canal, and we have rugae. So these structures we are seeing is called rugae. And it only appears when the individual is hungry. Right? So we know our type 1 hunger contraction, type 2 hunger contraction, type 3 hunger contraction. So when the individual is hungry, the rugae appears. More like when the stomach is empty, the rugae appears. So it extends all the way to the pyloric region. The only way, the only region where we cannot find the rugae because we, this area can be pinned. On the interior of the stomach can be pinned and you can be asked to identify what part of the stomach it is in terms of fundus, body, cardiac and pyloric part. So the only part where we cannot find rugae in an empty stomach is the fundus of the stomach. And why is that? Because food content doesn't reach there. It only contains air and bubble. So this on those parts is for air and bubble. However, the rest of the stomach has rugae except the fundus part. So if the interior of the of the stomach is pinned and it is a fundus area and you can see from that place that there is no rugae at all, then that is our fundus of the stomach because you might not be permitted to flip it over to identify whether it is actually the fundus or not. So that's by the way. Now, I said we have gastric pits also. Gastric pits are just this depressions that we can see and it allows for the channel for all these slight depressions that we can see and it allows for gastric juice and uh, we should also know the component of gastric juice of course not for anatomy so that's by the way so our rugae then i also mentioned our gastric canal a gastric canal i'm closing this up because our gastric canal is related to the lesser curvature so our gastric canal is related to the lesser curvature and is this area this smooth area this smooth area is our gastric canal. So this is our gastric canal. And what is the significance of the gastric canal? Imagine, like for instance, if they pin this area and ask that, okay, what is this structure? And you specifically identify that, okay, it is a gastric canal. Now ask that, what is the significance of this structure? It is the commonest site for gastric ulcer. So this area is the commonest site for gastric ulcer. And that's because the food, when we, when we first take in food, whether, whether, um, acid, whether um, alcohol or any food at all, whether harmful or not, it first enters through the esophagus, through the esophagus into the cardiac end of the stomach, then it comes downward through the gastric canal before it then fills the pylorus and the body, right? So that's why the gastric ulcer, the gastric canal is the commonest type of gastric ulcer because it's the part that technically first comes in contact with the food particles coming from the esophagus. Then, this area also, just an addition, can be pinned and the significance. This is our pylorus part, of course, and what's the significance? The commonest part for gastric cancer. So this is the commonest site for gastric cancer, and this is the commonest site for gastric ulcer. I already mentioned the um, the what accounts for the pyloric center, and I said that is the thickening of the in middle circular muscular layer of the stomach. So the pyloric splinter is anatomical, but the cardiac splinter is not anatomical. It's only physiological. It does not appear there anatomically. That's why there is no thickness in that area. Now let's go to the arterial supply of the stomach. Another common asked or often asked question in steeple chase. Now, arterial supply to the stomach, basically they just ask that the arterial supply to this structure if it's not theory, if it is a simple chase question, the arterial supply to this structure. Just simply put celiac artery or celiac trunk. And why is that? The stomach arises from the foreground. 
So any structure that arises from the four words and you are not specific or you are not asked to specifically identify what structure or what artery supplies it, it is safer to just write the common artery to that area. And the common artery to the four gut is the ciliac trunk. We know for the mid gut is superior mesenteric artery, and we know for the hind gut is the inferior mesenteric artery. So to the stomach is our ciliac trunk. If you are not specifically asked to name the artery, so now if they specifically ask, what they normally do is to spin specific regions of the stomach. They just spin maybe the pylorus, or they spin the spindles, or they spin the greater curvature or the lesser curvature, asking for what actually supplies it. Now we have the celiac trunk. What are the branches of the celiac trunk supplying the stomach? What the splenic artery? The splenic artery gives two branches to the stomach, and these are the short gastric artery and the left gastroepiphyteal artery. From this common, from the celiac trunk again, we have the left gastric artery. The left gastric artery also supplies the stomach, and it's the direct branch of the celiac trunk. And the many two arteries that supply the stomach are our right gastric artery and our right gastroepiphyteal artery. So the right gastric artery is a branch of the common hepatic artery, which is a direct branch from the celiac trunk, right? So the celiac trunk has three major branches, the splenic artery, which gives two branches to the stomach, left gastroepiploic and short gastric arteries. We have the left gastric artery, which is a direct branch of the celiac trunk, and we also have the common hepatic artery, and that gives off right gastric artery. Also from the common hepatic artery, it gives off terminal branch, which are gastro artery and proper hepatic artery. So from the gastro artery, we have our right gastro artery, and that is the five major arterial supply to the stomach. So short gastric artery, left gastro artery, right gastro artery, right gastric artery, and left gastric artery. We already talked about where, where each of these are arising from. Now let's talk about where each of these are supplying. Now the short gastric artery, supplying the fundus of the stomach. So if this area is spin and you are asked for the arterial supply to this area, this is our short gastric artery. Now the lesser curvature is supplied by two artery. We have left gastric artery and right gastric artery. The left gastric artery is up and the right gastric artery is down. So right here along the lesser curvature is our left gastric artery and below the lower part of the lesser curvature is our right gastric artery. They are now stomaching with each other. So that is for the lesser curvature. Then the greater curvature, we already said that the fundus is applied by short gastric artery. So the the area where greater momentum is, so the area where greater momentum is, is what is supplied by the left gastroepiploid and the right gastroepiploid. Now the upper part, again, the left is up and the right is down. The upper part is supplied by left gastroepiploid artery. So if this area is pinned, this is our left gastroepiphyteal artery. If this area is pinned, this is our short gastric artery. Then the lower part of the greater curvature, we have our right gastroepiphyteal artery. So if this area is pinned, this is our right gastroepiphyteal artery, left gastroepiphyteal artery, short gastric artery, left gastric artery, and right gastric artery. The venous drainage corresponds to each of these parts. So we have our short gastric veins, left gastroepiploid vein, right gastroepiploid vein, left gastric vein, and the right gastric vein. Also note the areas where each of these veins, where they drain to. So the right and left gastric veins are tributaries of the portal vein, so they drain directly into the portal vein. The short gastric vein and the left gastroepiploid vein, just like the artery, it drains directly into the splenic vein. So these are tributaries of splenic vein. It's only the right gastroepiploid vein that has of a different part. It can either drain into the superior mesenteric vein or it can drain directly into the portal vein, depending on which one. But it's, you can put it so you can write either one. In case they ask that the venous drainage of this piece, just write right gastroepiphyteal vein. If they do not ask where it drains into, leave it there. If they ask, you can put it. So our our cardiac end can be pinned and you can be asked what vertebral level the cardiac end is. This area, the vertebral level, it is T11. So note the vertebral level of the cardiac and the T11. And the pyloric end could, too can be pinned. Note the, the vertebral level. This is L1, which corresponds to transpyloric plane, the transpyloric plane. So this L1, this T11, L1, T11. And note the lymphatic drainage of the stomach, although it may not be asked in triple chase, but it can be asked in 
essay questions, MCQ, and this is exactly it. And take note that this ruge, when the stomach is distended or filled, it flattens out or it completely disappears. It becomes like this fundus. It will, be, it will not be present anymore. The When the stomach is filled or, or distended, it's, the ruge disappears. So this is all for the stomach. Bye for now.